Hello, it's nice to see you again. We're here for another SQL snack by the SQL Pro. Today we're going to discuss virtual log files, or what we know in, in the SQL world as VLFs. You may have heard this uh, phrase being thrown around. And they're very important uh, logical structures of the log files. They're essential um, to SQL Server and the way that it writes to the transaction log and can cause major performance problems. For example, if you have too many VLFs, it can cause um, slow restores, inserts, updates, deletes, and it can also be a sign of fragmented log file. It can also cause excessive locking. It can slow down your high availability features such as mirroring or availability groups. And if they're too large, they can cause transaction log backups to be slow, or it can take them longer um, well, it takes them longer to clear, which can make them slower. It can also cause uh, slower recovery in uh, the case of a crash, a system crash or a database crash. VLF issues are easy to detect and they're easy to solve. Uh, first, by pre-sizing the transaction log and using regular sized intervals for growth instead of percentages. There's a command called dbcc log info which returns the number of records and that is the number of VLFs for that database's log file. Uh, it's a undocumented command but it's very well known. And one more thing uh, with regards to transaction log performance is increasing the number of transaction logs does not increase uh, the performance as it does with uh, data files or as it could with data files. So let's talk a little bit about VLFs. So let's say that this is a transaction, transaction T1. As the transaction runs, you know, it has a start time and an end time. And let's say that during this time, your database is running a log backup. So what's going to happen is, because the transaction is still running, this VLF, this virtual log file inside of your transaction log, will not be truncated. Now, let's say that your T log backup ran at this point, then this VLF will be truncated and marked as ready to use. So as we go on, we have more transactions starting and ending. T2, T3, T4, and you're going to have um, log backups happening consistently, hopefully, if you have things set up properly. And what happens is, as long as there is an active transaction within that VLF, then the VLF won't be cleared at, or marked as uh, reusable for new transactions coming in. So let's say that you do a log um, backup here. So now these two VLFs, this one here and this one here, have been cleared. And transaction 3 is still running. And you'll have a log backup that runs around here. So now you have all of your VLFs cleared and ready to use. But what SQL Server does is when it reaches the end of the log, it actually wraps around to the beginning of the log and starts writing in a circular fashion. So it starts to write from the beginning. So since you did regular log backups, these VLFs have been cleared, so they're ready to be written to again. Now let's say that you did not do log backups or that you had a transaction that ran for a very long time and it's still running and when you got to the end of the log file there was no more space. What happens is that log file will grow and that can cause performance impact. So if you have um, shorter transactions and you're clearing your VLFs uh, more frequently by running regular log backups, then your transaction log will roll back and reuse that space that was marked as uh, ready to be used for further transactions. And that's kind of how transactions work in a nutshell. So what happens is, um, as your log grows, it creates VLFs, right? And this is probably what your log looks like if you don't pre-size it properly. 
So you need to pre-size your transaction log based on your workload. And when you do that, you get to determine the number of VLFs because it's determined by um, the growth increments. So if you grow your transaction log by 64 megs, then you're going to have four VLFs. If you grow between 64 megs and one gig, you're going to have eight VLFs for that section. So if you grow by more than a gig, you're going to have 16 VLFs. So let's say that you have a 10 gig transaction log file and you've grown it in increments of one gig. So that means you're going to have 160 VLFs at the end of creating that transaction log file. But let's say that you grew it at one gig and then you had it auto grow at 64 megs. So by the time it reaches 10 gigs, you're going to have a lot more VLFs than 160. So how many VLFs should you have? Well, it depends. If you have too few large VLFs, log backups take a lot longer. So you want to make sure that you don't exceed 512 megs per VLF. Kimberly Tripp has a great article on SQL skills um, about this where she goes into much more detail. And if you have too many small VLFs, there's going to be longer recovery time, locking issues. So uh, it's advisable not to exceed 100. Um, I've heard from other SQL professionals not to exceed 300. So just make sure you're within that range. And now it's time to go to my demo on VLFs. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a database with a log file that is 800 megs in size with file growth of 100 megs. And as you can see that took approximately 8 seconds to complete. And you can see that it has 8 rows returned, that means it has 8 VLFs. Right? They are approximately um, 100 megs in size each. Now I'm going to create another database where the log file is 1 meg and with a log growth of 10%. So it's an uneven growth rate. And as you can see, this took uh, a lot less time to uh, create because there's no uh, pre-creation um, that, that's being done for that log file. So it's not pre-allocating that space. And as log files pre-allocate and reuse space, what happens is it does what's known as uh, zero filling on the drive. So it run, writes a bunch of zeros. And you can see that by turning on this uh, trace flag and then reading through the error log. Oops, let me get that. You can see here, zeroing. And you'll notice that um, it's also zeroing my data files because I don't have instant file initialization turned on. So I've created uh, two databases. I'm going to set the recovery model to full because I want to make sure that I can fill my log files in this demo. I'm also going to back up um, the databases to disk equal null. Uh, that's just a technique that, that I use for my demos. So when you turn the full recovery model on for a database, it does not behave like the full recovery model until you actually take a full backup. Uh, before I get down to business, let me show you how many VLFs I have in my other uh, database here. And using this command, I can see how much free space I have in my logs. So you notice in my good VLF, it's 800 megs, and very little space is used, less than a percent, whereas this one has 53% uh, of, of the log being used. So I'm going to create a dummy table with a clustered index on it. And I'm going to run this code here. And what this code does is it actually um, writes a bunch of data, random data in here. And then it does a alter index, reorganizes, and then it deletes the data. And then it repeats that cycle. So I want to point out that doing an Reorganize, doing a reorg on an index 
actually fills your or can fill your transaction log. So those are our logged commands. Just keep that in mind. A lot of people consider maintenance tasks as uh, not logged, which is not uh, completely true. All right, so I pause the video. Uh, that took about 47 or 46 seconds, excuse me. And you'll see that when I run uh, the log info dbcc command, there's still eight VLFs. So um, it hasn't changed. The file has uh, not changed on disk. It's still the same size. And now I'm going to do the exact same thing on my other database. I'm going to create the exact same table. I'm going to run the exact same code. All right, so that's completed, and it took 54 seconds to complete. So eight more seconds uh, to complete the same exact task on the other database. And that's because um, as, as the uh, command is running, it's actually growing the log file. And as it's growing the log file, it's writing zeros um, to whatever space it's allocating. So it's taking a lot longer um, to write. If you remember, when I first created both databases, the good VLF database took longer to create up front, whereas the bad VLF took less time to create up front. But it's taking more time as transactions are being, uh, you know, committed on it, which can cause performance issues when you don't want them to happen. Right? If you pre-allocate your log files and pre-size them, uh, some of those performance issues won't show up during highly transactional times when you don't want them to show up. So I'm going to run dbcc log info and you'll see I have 68 rows uh, because my log file has more VLFs now and also you'll notice that all of the sizes are not equal because I was growing it by a percent. So how do I fix this? First uh, let me mention that what I'm going to do I'm doing in my demo environment so don't, don't do this in your production environment. What you want to do is you want to take a backup of the transaction log so that it clears the log out and then shrink it. So for my demo environment I'm just going to set it to simple recovery which is going to clear out the log automatically. I'm going to shrink it to the smallest possible size and then I'm going to start growing it in increments. All right. And then finally I'm going to change the file growth increment to be 100 megs instead of a percentage. And you'll see that um, now I have less VLFs and it, I mean it's not that much less but it's a uh, more evenly spaced out VLF. Now let me take you to another demo here that I have where I'm going to create two more uh, databases. This one has a log file that's initially sized at 1 meg with a max size of 400 and file growth is at 1k. I'm going to set the recovery to full and I'm going to do a backup again just to make sure that it, it's set up properly. I'm going to create a table with uh, really bad data in it and I'm going to start inserting this data all right, so that took uh, 1 minute and 52 seconds. And as you can see, there's 1,600 VLFs. That's a lot. Now I'm going to create a second database, and I'm actually going to pre-size the log file to 400. I'm going to set the max size to 400 as well. Um, and as you saw, that took about 4 seconds to complete, so it took a little bit longer to create initially. I'm going to run through the same process, um, you know, run a full backup, and then create that table and I'm going to insert a bunch of rows and this time I won't pause the video because I won't need to. Uh, it's going to take a lot less time. With the first database that I created the log file had to grow. Let me see here it is. So it had to grow to that max size of 400 and as it's growing it's uh, you know writing zeros to the disk and it's, it's allocating its space. Whereas for the second database that I created, which I did a better job of because I pre-allocated um, the data, it already did that, that initial um, writing of the zeros on the drive, zero filling. So it takes a lot less time because it doesn't need to grow 
during this transaction. So as you saw, this took 10 seconds. The other one took 1 minute 52 seconds. So it's a lot longer. And you'll notice here that it only has um, 8 VLFs, and they're equally sized. Now when I run a log backup of the first database that I created, it's going to take uh, longer than the log backup of the second database that I created. So that took approximately seven seconds. And that took three seconds, three and a half seconds. So it took half the time to back up the second database. I probably should have called it something different than fire me VLF number two uh, because this was actually created better um, than, than the initial one. So as you can see, uh, growing takes longer with multiple VLFs um, and even doing a backup after the, the growth operation is complete is taking twice as long. So now I'm going to create an open transaction where um, I'm going to insert data until the log fills up. So because I ran the log backup here, it truncated the log and allowed it to be reused. And the same thing here, truncated the log and allowed it to be reused. Now I'm going to fill that log again and keep the transaction open. So I'm going to take this piece of code. It's the same exact piece of code, but it's running on database number two. I'm going to put it in a different window. And I'm going to run this until my other transaction log fills. And then when that's done, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set both databases offline and then bring them online and show you that recovery of the database with more VLFs is going to take longer because SQL Server is going to have to process um, that log file and since it has more VLFs it's going to take longer time. So this took 21 seconds to fill up, uh, this one took 23, they're, they're pretty close. Since the file's already grown um, there's, there's not as much time being consumed in file growth. Alright, so the two databases are now offline, so I'm going to set them back online. And that took about three seconds. And that took um, well, what looks like zero seconds. So as you can see, um, backup of the transaction log, growth of the transaction log, and recovery of the database as a whole took less time on the database where I pre-allocated the log file and it has uh, less VLFs and they're, they're easier to maintain uh, at that point. And they're a lot larger too so there aren't a ton of small VLFs that SQL Server has to manage on the log file. I hope you enjoyed this demo and we'll see you at the next SQL Snack.